everybody, welcome to Tying Tuesdays. My name is Brady with Avid Max, and today we're gonna to tie an October Caddis dry fly for you. So it's a great um, late season dry fly that you can fish. It's like kind, of, kind of the last chance to throw big bugs after eager fish. Uh, so this pattern is gonna start out, we're gonna tie it on a TMC 100 dry fly hook. This is a size 10 we're doing today. These are bigger flies. Uh, we're gonna create a little dubbing blend for it. A nice orange blend, so we're using the ice dub hot orange and the hairline uh, dubbing orange as well, and we'll blend that up. And then the main wing of our flies that's going to be a nice big wing is this bleached elk hair, just natural bleached elk hair. And then the front end, the hackle we're going to use to kind of finish it off is this Keo. This is a great color. This is their um, grizzly ginger color, and you can see it's just a nice nice colored hackle for this pattern. So let's get into it here. All right, so we're just gonna start our thread here. This is the rust brown color of the uni thread. And we're trying uh, size 10 here. And we're just gonna take this thread all the way to the back towards the hook bend there to start our dubbing. Not too many materials for this fly, but it can be a little challenging to tie just because of the uh, elk hair, the you know, large amounts of elk hair that's used. So I have a dubbing blend that I mentioned. There's kind of the final coloration of the blend. It's that orange with the uh, hot orange ice dub. Gives it just a really nice shimmery color. A little bit of an extra attractant for those fish. So we're going to start with a dubbing noodle just to do the very butt end of the fly here to start out. But I'll do a generous amount because these are, I say generous amount, but with dubbing you always want to start small. They are a little bit um, thicker flies though, the October caddis, so get away with a heavier dubbed body. But we're going to start just on the back. This is going to kind of just be the starting of our body as well as the wing prop for the first part of our wing. So you don't want to go too far down the hook here. I'm using today these Tiemco deer hair scissors. They have a fluoride coating on them to help prevent any static when you're when you're working with deer hair, and they work great for that. Also, just a very sharp scissor overall. A nice little point on there. So we're going to tie in the first thing here. We're going to get a little bit of deer hair. It is actually elk hair bleached elk hair. Pull off some off of there. Good healthy amount. This is the back side so you kind of work your way forward and I always add a little bit more as I work forward um, but you still want a good healthy amount of hair here towards the back. So we're going to take that, we're going to stack it in our hair stacker. I'm using the Dr. Slick. This is the aluminum hair stacker. This is a great product too because it doesn't uh, I never have any static issues with this hair stacker. Everything comes out of there real nice and smooth. I really like this hair stacker. But you can see it gets the tips nice and stacked. We're going to remove some of that fur from it here still. Always want to clean up your deer hair. And then we're going to tie it in right on the back here. I'm going to go just a little bit past the end of the hook there. Kind of set the length of our, our wing overall. And I'm going to trim it pretty close to where I'm going to tie it in, uh, like a stimulator, not so much like an elk hair caddis where you want it to flare, but just so that it kind of lays down flat towards the back of the body here. So we're going to cover that up and just get it on there nice and tight so that it's laying right on top, like so. Trim out some of this excess hair. And we're going to come back and dub the body again here. So if you got some hair sticking out, no big deal because you're going to dub over it. But we want our wing nice and secure, not moving around on us. Same dubbing all the way forward. This blend of orange that we got going on here. This is a great pattern at the end of the summer, right into the fall. Starting in September all the way into November. Uh, these are hatching if you're lucky enough to have them in your area. 
and it's a good opportunity to just kind of throw some big bugs before mid-season really kicks in on us. You can see the wings spinning on me. I don't want that. So we'll dub over that elk hair base that we got there. And then on this pattern, just make sure towards the bottom of your fly that you are covering up all those thread wraps where that elk hair is. Something like so, and then we'll go up just a little bit. We're gonna tie in three total wings laying on top of each other. This bug just got a big tent wing on it, so we wanna try and imitate that as best we can. So we'll clean out our elk here. All I'm doing, I'm just using my fingers and I hold them on the tips and then try and remove as much under fur and excess that I don't want and do the same on the top just before I stack it. Kind of get it cleaned up. second wing. Sure we have all the hair that we want there. There we go. Those extra ends sticking out. So we're going to measure. I'm going to go just a little bit longer than the back wing was. We're going to trim out excess and tie that in real close. Just like so. Make sure it's nice and snug again. And then we'll dub this a little bit more here. And it's just a three step process for this wing. Give it a nice big profile. my saliva but it's not quite giving me that dubbing noodle I want so we're gonna pull out some of the high tax wax here and really get that to dub down. There we go. So if you hold your wing back when you kind of tie it down if it was kind of getting a little unwieldy on you you can use your dubbing to hold everything back there just like so. Just make sure we're fixated on top a little more dubbing and then we'll tie in our final wing. Check our underbody. I always tend to leave thread wraps exposed, so I'm always checking myself on that now. So just to kind of show you what I'm doing here as I'm tying in these wings, I have this piece of uh, elk hair here, and all you do is you kind of select a good hank of it and pull it up 90 degrees off of there with the amount that you want. So I have that much right there, and it's gonna it's gonna become a little bit smaller as we trim it down and get all that under fur out. But I'll clip it nice and close. You can see how it has all that fur in there. We just want to pick that out. So if you hold it by the tips, you pick out most of this under fur. You can come back with a comb or a dubbing brush. This is the hairline dubbing brush here. You can comb it through and get all that fur out of there. Most of the times so I'm using just my fingers. I feel like I can get it pretty well clean um, before you go to stack it there. So that gets it nice and clean. And then we're going to trim out just our butt ends there. So then you can take the elk hair that you have trimmed out there and, and prepped and just drop it right in your hair stacker. Like so, tip this down, like that. And then we're gonna give it a shake and tap it until those tips all get aligned on the inside of there. As you kind of hold them horizontally, you pull that out, you can see we got our tips all aligned. There's a little bit more under fur and some extra pieces that got turned around in there, but we can just kind of pick those out. 
and end up with our nicely aligned Alcare tips there to tie in. Okay, so we're gonna take that Alcare that we just got all prepped up, measure it out on the top of this fly again a little bit longer, kind of creating that um, angled look to these wings. We'll trim it off a little bit more there and tie it in right on top just like we did the other two. I like to, when I'm tying in my wings, I like to give kind of a couple quick wraps and then I'll pull my bobbin straight down. And what that does is it keeps the tension all the way on the bobbin versus pulling from here. You have an angled point. Um, I don't know if you can see that. You have that angle point that creates a tension point that you could potentially break it. But if you pull it straight down, you don't run into that issue. So we're gonna just clean this head up. And we're gonna build a little bit of a ramp for the final materials that we're gonna tie in here. Which is gonna be our peacock curl and our hackle. So we'll make sure you get that wing where you want it. Make that ramp. I'm gonna put in one more little piece of, uh, one more section of dubbing to kind of blend everything. Not very much this time. We wanna leave ourselves room to do the front end of the fly. So just a quick dubbing noodle that you can wrap kind of around and under again and just make sure that we cover up our thread wraps towards the bottom of the fly there. Okay, so then we're gonna have our peacock. I'm gonna use two strands of peacock curl, tie them in at the same time, try and get the barbels to both flare downward. So clipped off the tips of my peacock there to get it ready. tie it in right on the side. Almost all the way back to that elk hair where we ended there. So once we have the peacock in there, then I'm going to take my hackle and I picked out a piece of hackle that's appropriate for this size 10 fly here, just using the hackle gauge. Great tool to have. Griffin makes an awesome little hackle gauge tool that you can use. Make sure you're getting the right sizes on there. So once we have a nice ramp here, the head of our fly, come up to the front and do a half hitch. Keep things out of the way and then we'll start wrapping our next material there. Do a couple of them. Okay, throw this over on our bobbin cradle like so, and start wrapping that peacock curl. Keep our hackle out of the way for now. Okay. There we go. And for this one, I'm gonna make, I don't know that my barbels are all lined up the same way, so I'm gonna do a rope with this peacock curl. I'm just gonna spin it around itself a little bit just to ensure that it's kind of flaring out. This is gonna be the under piece of the head, but it'll still just give it a nice look if we can get it to flare. So by wrapping it, it makes it a little easier to do that. Just a few wraps up to the front before we grab our material with our thread and tie that off. broke off on me, but I had it tied down, so that'll be just fine here. I always like to leave myself a little room to work with when I bring that hackle up. I'm gonna tie that off. Okay. So one more little half hitch tool here, or half hitch knot rather. Bobbin cradle over, and then for this one, I'm gonna actually use some hackle pliers, make this a little bit easier on myself. These are the rotary hackle pliers from TMCO. It's a great tool. They have the nice um, rubber piece on there to keep your material from breaking on you. And they're just very smooth and easy, easy to use there. So there's the idea of the hackle pliers. All you do, pinch them open just like so. And grab the end of your hackle. And then you can kind of hold them out. I don't know if you can see that kind of hold them out at a 90 degree angle and you get that nice rotation 
in partnership with your rotary vise here. So I'm gonna wrap the hackle around, somewhat tight wraps. I like to space them just ever so slightly so that peacock curl kind of shimmers through, uh, but give it a nice full head at the same time. And then we can, uh, nice thing about the hackle pliers is you can let your hackle hang there and the tension of it is gonna keep it from coming undone while you're kind of working to, to finish off the fly. But I'm gonna bring my thread around, try to capture as few of those barbels as possible as we finish this off here. Okay, so now that we got that in place, I'm just gonna cut this free and let it fall. That's one of those extra fibers that you get trapped. That's kind of inevitable. We'll finish off and give it a nice head here. With just a quick whip finish. So there's your finished October Caddis dry fly. Again, this is kind of one of the last opportunities to fish a dry fly that you can actually see. Just a big bug. Catch them hatching, they'll be hatching in the fall when the leaves are dropping. The more leaves you see, kind of the better off you are to get some fish to kind of come after a big healthy meal here. Get them to rise to it like we all love to do. There's your October caddis dry fly. If you like the video, make sure you give us a thumbs up on it. There's also an area down below where you can drop us a line and leave a little comment for any future fly tying or product related videos that you would like to see. For more fly fishing and outdoor related videos, subscribe to our Avid Max YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there.